Hi everybody, here we are in uh, session two of trying to resolve this uh, concertina journal, or this side of the concertina journal anyway. Um, I worked a little bit more on this front page. I think the only thing that I did was added this accent right here, as I remember it. Everything else was on camera. Uh, this page, see this is just a continuous process for me. This page looks way too busy now, way too busy. So I'm gonna have to figure out something to calm that down. And I think just a bunch of white, maybe. That's where I'm gonna start with that anyway. And then the next page, hopefully, gosh, the reflection is so bad. I'm trying to figure out the best way to make sure there's enough light, enough light and not too much reflection. Okay, that doesn't look too bad for you and I think I've got enough light to work. So let's just focus on one page at a time. This can get really overwhelming if you start to think about too much about what's happening before and after. So that page I think I'm gonna call done. I'm gonna turn it under. I like what happened here, but I wish I would have just left some of it alone. So I'm gonna get some more out and see what I can do. Oops. And I think that, let's see, there's a little bit of palette paper here. I'm going to just take some of my white. this big tub to the side. So I don't make any inadvertent mistake here. And I'm gonna use some gloss medium in there as well, just to help with transparency and to keep it moving. Got a brush over here that was sitting in the water, so I've got to dry it off some so it doesn't have a lot of water in it. I've got so much glossy medium on this now that um, using water to wet down the paint will cause it to beat up and be more problematic. Ugh, I really loaded that brush up with that paint when I did that. So let's see, I do like on this side, I do like this part and part of what I'm trying to think about is how to make these pages um, converse with each other and continue across the page. So I like how this comes over from this page. Um, there's a little bit of white here that I could come off of maybe without um, turning that into, you know, a hard break at the, pa at the page. So let's see, I do quite a bit of finger painting, which is another good reason to wear some gloves. Kind of like that little bit of yellow right there. Let's see. But I definitely need calm. So what if I kind of, oh look, I got the texture from that. That's so cool. I never know what's gonna happen with this either, but I think that I want to preserve, whoops some of this yellow here. Oops, I dropped my paper towels on the floor and if I don't pick those up, I think I'm gonna have a dog chewing on them. So let's see. I think that that's, oh yeah, that's better. So I'm getting some texture. So I don't wanna completely obliterate what I had here. Just trying to kind of tone things down some. That's already helping. I really like a lot of what's happening there, but maybe what if we had just what do we want to do? Hmm. Just can't decide for sure. I apologize for the shaking of the camera. It's attached to the board or the table so when I get going on uh, <laughs> working on these 
pages. I see it still. Do you all find that you start doing this, going over and over, doing the same thing again and again, and then... Hmm. Okay, maybe if I just... also pretty possible to get attached to attach to something that you like on a page and be unwilling to cover it up so that certainly did not help matters at all there so let's try just making a shape here maybe and bring it down there goes that eye like that looking out of there, but I don't want it to be too obvious. trying to keep those pages tying in one to the other. So I think that helped, but if I've got a big mass of white there, I want some white somewhere else. And I don't want to mess with the page previous. What if I just... My intention with these books is not to create something, a perfect work of art. These are experimentation and trial and error, so at some point I just kind of give up and move on. I'm still bothered with that being, I don't look at that sort of but that's making that kind of busy again, too. What if I... See, there's the other question. What if... areas like that and some areas of solid white or not solid but solid earth so I've got three well actually four now so I should probably well and if we count this one as five odd numbers are always better than even oh look at wow isn't that something now see that was really bothering me and now that I've just put those five areas of more solid white and scrape that away I think that I'm gonna let that page sit for a little while anyway and I might come back to it later and see if it's done or not. So that's what always happens with these things is it's a process of going through the pages and trying to decide. Oops, and then I put my thumb right into that white paint that I wanted to be smooth. <laughs> Sorry about that noise in the background. Hold on a second, I'll close the door. Okay, I noticed earlier that while I like all the things that are happening here, this, this, and I like the white, but I don't like the torn ripped edge. That still feels like a patch just shoved on there, just stuck on there. So I need to integrate that in some way. So I'm gonna take some of this color, I think. Let's see. I've got a lot of white out over here, and I've got a lot of white in this brush. So I'm going to get my brush in the water and just, just give this a squirt with some water so that it will stay wet a little while longer. 
And I've got my turquoise right here. I'm starting to put my palette on top of a page that I really am quite happy with, so maybe I should flip past that to a page that I'm not quite so happy with, just in case something seeps through. I have a nice big table here, and it is still not big enough. I don't know if there's ever enough room for an artist, do you think? Let's see. For this kind of stuff, I just use lousy little brushes, too. These are cheap little um, craft brushes. Let's see, maybe some gloss medium. keep my really good brushes for canvases and whatnot. Okay, I want to think about how I want to make that last. Okay, well even that helped, right? So I'm thinking about that red peak. I don't think I want to go past it, so maybe if I just brought this down, whoops, shaky hand, like that. That's sort of interesting. And then Oh, I just had that. Ah, there it is. And it's not exactly as clean as it, like I was thinking it was either. So I kind of liked the shape of this as well. Okay. I think that that did quite a bit to integrate that. What if we did the same thing over here? Oh, for heaven's sakes, between the shaky hands and the piece of paper that goes up and down. Not that it's that important, but... Okay, so let's take another look at this now. One of the ways that I do that, if I'm having a hard time and I'm being distracted by the other things that are going on on other pages, because to me, anyway, these things need to work page by page as well as... Um, as a whole. So I just grab a couple of pieces of paper to help me look at this as an individual page. Hmm. I think I need more white in here somewhere. All right, I just happen to have some white on my palette, which I put right over here. I've once again got another piece of paper that's just stuck on. I like the repetition of the um, text. Hmm. And this is where the gloss medium underneath is pretty nice. If you decide something's not working, it's really easy to just take it off again. something I just did or if that was now that was there. So 
what if this continued this way instead? Get rid of a hard line that's dried in, apparently. That's all right. I think that might have helped quite a bit there, too. Let's see. Yeah, but I think once again, I've got white here. So I need to think about where I want people's eye to go. I think that is happening right there with that red. So that should be also where my darkest dark is and my lightest light. So I need some more white right in here somewhere. And a good solid um, opaque white. Look, I had a, oh, you know what? The seven. I had that over here before. I think and it got covered up. Let's see. Let's get that out again and that could be pretty interesting to put up there. It is right here. So clearly no plan. Just messing around. With stencils, it's I find it to be a little bit trickier with um, a paint and brush because the paint likes to go underneath the edges of the stencil. So I usually use um, a sponge, but also it's not that important to me if it smooches underneath there a little bit too. So eh, yeah, that's kind of cool. Because it's really about the shape. It does, it's not a seven. It doesn't have to be recognizable. Um, get a little bit of paint off of the stencil and put it off to the side. And then I think I still have the opportunity to clean a little bit of that edge out because a lot of paint went under the stencil here. And I don't really want a ridge there, I don't think. So let's see. Maybe just kind of <laughs> see, this is what happens when you start to um, get too picky. So now I've got a funny edge. Of course, my glove is not on the end of my finger either. And now I've got a funky edge that I gotta try and fix. That's sort of not the point of the whole process here. Not so much about fixing as it is about just playing. Okay, good enough. So, let's look at the next page. Boy, that page before is still bothering me, but I'm gonna let it continue to dry some more. And this page right here, got to rearrange a few things. Let's move off the edge. This page I really like just the way it is, I think. I'm not going to mess with that anymore. This page. So this happens with the gloss medium too. Things get stuck together and it doesn't really matter. There, if it bugs you a lot when you're done, you can rub a candle over the top of them or um, use some cold wax medium on them. But you have to make sure that you're done before you do that because paint will not stick to wax. Okay, so that page is done there. 
this page right here. Okay, so now we're near done. I like the introduction of the purple up here. I used a uh, piece of paper with a hole punched in it to kind of make a partial circle there, which is interesting. I've got a circle here. This is paint that I peeled off of a, um, I use these sometimes as palettes too, just a top of a yogurt container or whatever. And when it gets thick on there, it peels right off. And I thought that mark right there particularly was kind of interesting. So I used that. What else do I want to put on there? I've got a lot of circles going on, so maybe something geometric would be interesting. Hmm. And that is a dioxazine purple. I think it's the... No, that's too red. For some reason, that is one of the colors that always hides on me. So I'm going to pause the video and find that paint, and I will be back. All right, I found it, and I came back up. This happens all the time. This is part of the reason why my table is such a mess. I got to looking at this, and this needs more white. So before I start putting on um, purple, I think I'm going to add some more white again. And I'm just looking at this and trying to decide like what is the most interesting thing that's going on here so far. I think I like this. The center is kind of dull. I just, I don't know what I'm going to do, but going on with some of the texture underneath there now. That's probably a piece of tape. I like it better white though. And I'm always thinking about carrying things over. I don't know, that green underneath there was not really doing much for me. Here's some of this. Do we want another circle? Do we want... Had that idea of the geometric shape.
that's not what I expected, but that is fine. Another thought here. Take a piece of paper and punch a smaller circle into it. I've got these um, inexpensive craft punches. They're okay, but they're not awesome. See, that did not work well at all because my paper is thinner and this one might be not in the best of shape. I used to have. <laughs> I'm always looking for stuff. See what I mean? Okay, I've got a different idea. They're staring at me right here. So what if I... I've got these little Avery labels. If I made some of them into different values of this same blue-green. It's probably sort of defeating the purpose there. Let's see. Just make a bunch of them and I think I might want some that are really dark too. Circles show up quite often. Ooh, look at how cool that is. I think I'm gonna leave that just like that because that's really interesting. And then what if I, still looking at this triangle a little bit, I'd like to have it kind of be a little bit more interesting just in the paint surface. This is where I was picking up black for some reason over here. I like it better without that. I can say that. I was gonna thinking about purple. And that may still be something that needs to happen. And I'm also thinking about those green dots. The triangle. I was thinking about the triangle. Got the purple here. it might behoove me to find a piece of tissue paper. There's a little piece right there. Um, if I make a triangle on tissue paper, then I can move it around and decide where I want it to be. Let's see, and I could also... I don't think I have a stencil that's a triangle, so let's just try and just slide that up. Let's see if I just kind of sketch something out. Similar, but not the same size as that. Just as a guideline. Do with some gloss medium, because needs to kind of flow a little bit on this tissue paper because it doesn't handle being wet real well. So I'm 
hoping I'm not completely off camera for you. So I could certainly do this right on the page, but as I said, this is a way to be able to move it around before I commit. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to go through. That's the thing with this tissue paper. It goes through, so I'm going to have to let it dry before I do too much with it. But I'll be able to play around with it then. And especially over the white. But if I just kind of trim this down a little bit, this tissue paper will almost completely disappear when I stick it down. Let's see, what else? What if I did another a smaller one? While I'm at it, let's do something kind of, give myself some variety. This is a pretty lousy brush too. It's kind of um, limiting my control and that's good. That's something that um, I enjoy. Just not getting too picky about stuff and it's really easy for me to do that if my tools are too small or too fine pointed too precise and then the next question is can i get one more on there without goofing up the ones i've already put on Close enough. All right, I'm going to just clip this to my little uh, paint caddy over here. I have a clip just sitting there ready for that. And while I'm thinking about that, which way do I want to go? Let's look at. <laughs> Well, mixed media is so much fun. Okay, that page is done. This page, let's go back this way. I've got all these little pieces of paper with paint and stuff on them um, outside of the camera edges here. This is one right here <laughs> that um, I can't quite let go of, but I don't know what to do with yet. So it's tricky. Oh, look at but see, if you put them away, you'll forget about them. And if they're just laying around, I don't know if that's going to do the trick or not. Still not wildly happy with that. I don't know. This is a funny paper. I bought it at a craft store, and um, it said it was tissue paper, but it's not. And it doesn't go transparent like a tissue paper would. So um, while it's interesting, its use is somewhat limited. I don't know. I kind of like that there, though. Something's telling me, yeah, with that. So let's get a clean brush. That's another reason I use cheap brushes, because I'm always and forever needing a clean brush. And sometimes you just don't want a wet brush, even if you work pretty hard to dry it off, it will still sometimes hold some water in it. And too much water is too much water. So you can see what I mean. I think that that still is pretty opaque. It's marginally transparent, but not very much. It's interesting how that's picking up oranges and stuff. Not from the brush, I don't think. Hmm, okay, well, fine. See. So that's interesting. Then what if we 
did a little bit of extending this pattern with some black paint. For that, I like to use a fluid paint. And, oh, there it is, I did a lot of black on that. I put a little dot on the top of the lid so I can tell what kind of paint I have and I couldn't, couldn't tell anyway at that point. So I'll just put a little bubble of that out. And what could I do here? What would this look like if it kept going downward? Maybe I think it would, in my mind. <laughs> That's a really good brush, and it's all frazzled now, too. Bristles are sticking out. with a better point on it for this. In general, I do not have small brushes. Because of how weird I get about these tiny little details. I always say use a larger brush than what you think you're gonna need. It's got one sticking out past the tip. So sometimes I just do surgery on them. for heaven's sake. Being too picky. Tiny bit of black from the uh, edge of the paper I glued. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I should have left it alone. Yeah, I'm wiping some of the white off, too. Okay, so if I just fix this. And fix this point here, I think. Call it a day with that. So what do you think? Did that help? Let's 
Still not happy with that page, but I'm gonna leave it for now because I don't know what else to do with it. So sometimes when you don't know what else to do, the smartest thing to do is not do anything until you do know. But the other side of that is you can't let that sort of a feeling stop you from ever, do, from ever going back to it and doing anything again. So at some point, I have to, like with this page for instance, at some point I have to decide. If I don't know what I'm going to do right now, if let's say this was a whole painting. If I wasn't sure what I was going to do with this right now and I set it aside, that's fine. Maybe with a painting I'd even let that happen for a week or two. If it goes on beyond that, um, then it's time to do something even if it's wrong. It's just something has to happen to move forward. Okay, I've got an idea. I have enough white. I got more there than I thought I did. I said before I wasn't crazy about that mark right there. I think I've, there, I've got too many different kinds of marks going on at the same time in the same space just a little too much. Am I getting black? No, that's just... Sometimes it's just little things that really do help. I don't know why that got thinned out there like that. That came this way some more. I like the white on white. I'm gonna do that there. I think I might. My line is getting a little bit close here. This comes over. I don't want that to be on exactly the same plane, so I'm gonna bring it up even a little bit further. I kind of like what's happening there. It almost looks like writing. And it's making me wonder, so this is creating mystery and ambiguity, which is a big part of what, what I do is about. All right, I think that helped again too. So once again, set that page to the side. This page, I like it a lot better. I think I'll revisit it next time. That page I'm content with. This page is, oh, that was the purple squares, purple triangles. Sure. Not quite dry yet, I don't think, but they might be close enough. Let's see. I'm trying not to drop wet purple paint right on top of. Page that I'm trying to resolve. <laughs> These scissors I've been using to cut tape with. So they're um, 
sticky. So I got to think again about where do I want people's eyes to go. This is nice and calm over here, and that's kind of a lot going on there. I wouldn't mind something. I mean, it's an interesting area, but I think I think that's where I want my focal point to be, maybe up in here. So if I let this and the circle and that black space and the black dots be part of that. Mm -hmm. That is unexpected to me. I don't know why, but it surprised me when I turned it that way. It's interesting how triangles seem to imply meaning, or at least this is to me right now. So where did I have that that I thought was surprising? That way? I think that was it. That's what I'm going to do. Are you dry? No. Okay. Well, I figured out where I'm going to put it down. So I'll probably let that dry and then I will, um, it will be there for next time. And let's see about the rest of these triangles because I'm going to want three. That's just sort of a hint. So that could be my third purple area or maybe it won't be. I don't know. Let's see what we've got. Not that worried about trimming these things up real well because this paper will disappear for the most part. Have to look pretty hard to actually find it. It might be kind of cool in that blue, maybe. And then is not speaking to me. Let's see about this one. I don't know. I feel right now. I don't know how this relates to this either now. <laughs> I'm so, I'm enamored with this little spot and I think that that is I'm doing myself a disservice, so let's see if I've still got some white paint here that's still juicy. Yeah, there's still a little bit. Maybe just enough to knock that back, since it just does not relate to anything else here. And that mark will still show through somewhat. Okay. I thought that I was sure about that and now I don't know. I definitely like that one. All right, well, I'm gonna, f I'll fool around with these a little bit more when it's dry. And maybe I'll find some clarity. See, the trouble with collage, I think anyway, is that you can start, it's not really a trouble, but it's very easy to fool around for hours trying to figure something out. And at some point you need to just kind of make a decision and then you live with it. What if it went over the page a little bit? What if I used a larger one and it went over? Kind of partial. That might be more interesting. Or maybe <laughs> see what I mean? 
All right, I imagine this video is getting pretty long, so I'm going to stop it for now, and we'll see what this looks like when we come back. I'll make a couple decisions, and then um, I'll be back next time. So feel free to like the video, um, subscribe if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out. Let me know if you'd like to keep seeing this book continue to develop and evolve. Thanks so much. See you in the next video.